Hello and welcome to tutorial 145. Now there are some occasions uh, with TradeStation where you will find that there is not historical data. A good example of that might be tutorial 143 that uh, I did a few days ago. And a very simple example would be the inside ask and the inside bit. In this chart, what I'm doing is plotting that information. Now the problem is if I click Control R to reload the chart, what you'll find is that the data that is there at the moment will disappear. So let's do that, Control R, and you'll now see that information has disappeared. So what this tutorial is going to do is use the stream writer and reader to store information from some real-time data that's not available historically in a text file. So we have a chart open here. And just to give you an idea of what's happening is this data here with the uh, magenta and cyan is real time data. And this data here is historic data that has been stored. So if on this chart, I go control R, what's going to happen is the chart will replot and it's now getting the data here, which was previously real time. That's now been stored in a text file and used to plot. And if you go back, you'll see that there are clearly quite a few places where there is no historic data because it wasn't stored. So let's have a look at the program. Let's let you see the, uh, the namespaces uh, I'm using. The input for this is just one input, and that is the name and path. So this is a file or will be a file on your computer. And uh, let's just leave the uninitialized event there at the moment. So what we do when we uh, first apply this to the chart, using a once I'm clearing the print log. Then I am creating a new instance of the dictionary class, a new instance of the token list class, which we're calling bar data and T list respectively. And then what I'm doing is creating a new stream writer. If the file name and path doesn't exist, and this is a, the user input file name and path. If you remember, go back to the top, you'll see file name and path. If that doesn't exist, what the stream writer will do is create it. We want this to be auto flush. And then what we're going to do is just close a stream writer, because what we're going to do now is open a stream reader. Now this is basically saying if we've had this program open before and there is already some data stored, then what we're going to now do is open a stream reader to read that information. And the way that you do that with stream reader is you can use this thing called um, end of stream. So you use the, the name of the stream reader, then dot end of stream. So what this is saying is we're just going to run through this loop over and over again while it is not the end of stream. And what we do in each case, we get a line and a line is a string. Let's just go to the variables. Okay, we've got two strings, line and uh, str, which we'll look at later. But line is a string and we're going to put into that uh, line, the read line. So it's just going to go through each line in the stream reader. And we're going to print that information. And if we go back to the chart, you'll see we've got the contents of the line. And basically we've got a date time in a specific format. We've got uh, inside bid, inside ask and close. And uh, each time we're then going to clear the T list. Now T list is the token list. Again, just go back to the top. You'll see that uh, token list, T list, and then we, we created the instance of that here. So for each line, we're going to clear the T list. Then we're going to add to the T list the line that we've just added. Now, the beautiful thing about the token list is if you add a comma delimited, some comma delimited information to it, then you can access each item in that comma delimited string very, very straightforwardly. Now, another way of doing that, which I, I've also done here, is to use left string and right string and string lang. And uh, I think that is perhaps a little more difficult. And I might do a quick tip if anyone's interested in the different ways that you could parse a comma delimited string. So what, what we then do is we say, if not bar data dot contains T list zero. Now, bar data is the dictionary. And what ultimately we're going to have here is a dictionary where we have the date time as the index 
and then the other information as the item in the dictionary. So what we're saying here is if there isn't, if there isn't the item already in the dictionary with the, uh, the bar date time, which is stored in the zero element, then we're going to add it to the dictionary. So we add it. First item here is the index T list zero bar date time. And then the other items we're going to have here one, two and three and we're separating them with commas having done that we uh, end this while statement we go around it until there are no more lines to add then we close the stream reader and then we can reopen the stream writer like so so it's we're, we're going through the same syntax as before the stream writer file name and path if it's already there we don't recreate it and then we uh, we set auto flush to true and now for historic bars for each bar and uh, what we're doing get app info AA real ai real time calc is equal to zero means it's a historic bar and we're saying if the dictionary contains and then for the the bar that we're looking at, at the moment we um, work out the bar date time in the same format that we're going to store it later on when we're looking at the real time bars if there is an item in the dictionary with the same bar date time then what we do is we take a string of the uh, we put into a string the value that that is indexed for which we, we know is going to be the inside bid um, inside ask and the close information we again clear a token list then we add this information just like we did before to the token list and what this means is we now get access very easily to that information and uh, we find it because that's uh, not including the index we find the information we need in the zero element and in the first element now for real-time bars and uh, we know it's a real-time bar if get app info a real-time calc is equal to one and I'm also doing this at the end of the bar in other words, bar status one is equal to two. And we're doing two things. The first thing is we're writing the information to the stream writer and we're using the same format that we were previously retrieving. So we're putting in the, uh, the date time, followed by a comma, followed by the inside bid, followed by the inside ask. And then we're putting closing there as well. And then we're separating those with commas. So we're doing that so that information is going to be available if we subsequently, for example, reload the chart. And uh, then we're also plotting that information, but we're, we're doing it in a different color just so that we can differentiate the two. So it's actually uh, quite a, a simple program and uh, I think demonstrates this uh, stream writer and stream reader. And um, not only would this potentially be useful for information like tutorial 143 or bid information, etc., but also potentially if you had a program that did a lot of processing and uh, it was unnecessary to redo the processing, then you could use this technique as well. Anyway, I hope you find this useful.